Yemen's president is in Saudi Arabia, where he is expected to sign a deal that would see him step down. For months now, Ali Abdullah Saleh has withstood calls to resign with protests happening on a weekly, sometimes daily basis. He's now arrived in Riyadh. That's according to Yemeni state media. Saudi Arabia is one of the countries to have put forward a plan for Saleh to hand over power. Let's take a look now at that proposal put forward by the Gulf Corporation Council. Now, it says Saleh will hand over power to a deputy who is currently Abdul Rabu Mansur Hadi. Controversially, this would offer him immunity from prosecution, a clause activists and the opposition have consistently rejected. A unity government will be formed, which will include members of the opposition. And a presidential election will be held within two months after Saleh leaves office. Now let's speak now to our special correspondent in the Yemeni capital who we're not naming for her own safety. Let's take a look at this clause where he says that where it says that he will receive immunity in uh, for this transfer of the uh, uh, transfer of power. How is that being uh, received by those on the ground there in Yemen? Well, opposition activists and students who started the revolution themselves are saying that they would strongly oppose that. We're expecting that to be the announcement that he will have unity, but of course it hasn't been made official yet. But uh, local people on the ground here that are opposition parties and uh, activists themselves are saying that's not what they want. They're saying that the country here has been run by one family for too long, and they're really calling for some sort of uh, really a, a kind of um, justice um, on behalf of the Yemeni people. Now, even just recently on the Friday protest, just Friday past, they were saying put him in the dock, effectively. That was their chant. So right now here, amongst the opposition anyway, that's a very clear stance for them. Well, let's just remind us again. Now, he has said that he will sign this deal. He's done this three times before. Why is it now? What has changed now for him to actually sign the deal? Well, on the ground, people say that he's coming under increasing pressure. He's coming under international pressure, whether it's from the GCC and Saudi Arabia and its neighboring countries, but also internationally. We now have the UN here after he after he failed to sign the agreement three times before, we now have the UN here with their envoy who have been hosting the negotiations and basically shuffling between the two separate parties. So effectively, all cards are on the table because internationally, uh, the pressure is at its highest point this year. So the president up to now has been, uh, has been delaying and delaying, but right now people say that that pressure could be unbearable at the minute. He still hasn't signed the deal, so it still uh, remains to be seen within the coming hours whether or not he will actually step down. Well, thank you very much for speaking to us. That's our special correspondent there speaking to us uh, from Yemen. Now, well, joining us now from the Saudi capital is Hussein Shobokshi, a columnist with Al Shak Al Wasat newspaper. Thank you very much for being with us today. Now, will he or won't he sign? That is the question. Well, I think uh, this is the trickiest part of the whole uh, coverage of this particular situation is Ali Abdullah Saleh has been maneuvering left and right for the longest time, but I think he's under tremendous pressure. We believe most likely that he will sign. However, he is signing a deal with the opposition and not with the protesters, and we have to make a very important distinction between the two parties. The opposition are the members of the political parties that exist in Yemen. They are not the same uh, people who are, have been in the streets for, the, for over eight months now. Uh, there is also new details and new conditions that have been uh, provided by Ali Abdullah Saleh and his uh, cronies to be included, uh, particularly the protection and the immunity of uh, that he wants against any uh, possible uh, legal actions from the new governments. Well, let's take a look at the, uh, those legal actions, as you said, from the new government, as our special correspondent said that the opposition wasn't very happy to hear that. Do you think it's fair that he escapes being held accountable for what happened during his 30-year rule? 
Well, I think uh, it is a, an insurance policy for continuity. This is what is happening now. We give him immunity in order for the country to move on. They are taking a chapter out of South Africa, pro probably, uh, because they've seen what is happening in Libya and in Egypt, and they don't like it very much. And I think they have come to a conclusion that let's uh, close a chapter and move on forward. And but it remains to be seen how uh, sovereign uh, will and independent will the new government in Yemen be from the military and from the relatives of Ali Abdullah Saleh who have uh, important posts and are still in power till date. That's certainly a very interesting point. But let's take this on a wider perspective now. The GCC brokered this deal. What does this deal actually mean or what does it bring to the GCC? It brings a stable, relatively a stable political transformation on its borders. Uh, Yemen borders two important GCC countries, Saudi Arabia and Oman. Uh, it brings uh, relatively a calmer transformation uh, from an era to another, uh, less bloody. It has been bloody, of course, in Yemen for the longest time now. But the transformation of power is not the same as it is in Syria or it, as it was in Libya. So in a way, it does show that uh, a deal uh, can be brokered uh, with uh, neighboring countries that would bring peace and uh, political transformation relatively at, with a lower cost and price to a country in the Arab world. All right, thank you very much for speaking with us there. Um, uh, that was Hussein Shabokshi, columnist with Al Shakalawasat newspaper.